For a morning that we are commiserating with right. bereaved families, I think it's also important that we talk about former Ningo Pram Pram MPET Mensa, who has also passed on to glory at the age Ooh, of 70. Yes, 77 wow. is another story you can find on the city newsroom. And the story in detail is former member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency and council of state member E.T. Mensa has died age 77. City News understands he died in South Africa last night after battling ill health for some time. This comes on the back of the demise of former First Lady Theresa Kofu on Sunday, October 1, 2023. Yeah, we just spoke about that. And Octay Mensah, born 17 May 1946, was a Minister for Education and a Member of Parliament in Ghana from January 1997 till January 2017. He was popularly referred to as E.T. Mensah and was married with seven children during the time of the PNDC military regime in Ghana. He was the longtime chief executive of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, ANA, akin to being the mayor of the city of Accra. He joined the National Democratic Congress when it was formed in 1992. He also stood for the parliamentary election in 1996 and was elected MP for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, holding the seat for almost a decade. After the NDC lost the 2000 elections, he continued as a, a member of parliament. Mensah lost the NDC primaries to Sam George on 21st November 2015. He once served as the minority chief whip in parliament prior to the Ghanaian parliamentary election in 2008. In January 2009, he became the minority chief whip in parliament. At the beginning of the Fourth Republic, he was appointed Minister for Youth and Sports by President Jerry Rawlings. Mensah held that position through both terms of the Rawlings government. In January 2010, after a cabinet reshuffle, President John Atta Mills appointed him Minister for Employment and Social Welfare. Mensah was a member of the Pan-African Parliament until January 2009 when he resigned after being appointed a member of state. In January 2011, he was appointed Minister for Education following the resignation of Betty Mold Idrisu. On 12 February 2021, Mensah was unanimously elected as a representative of the Council of State for the Greater Accra Region. And this is the man, E.T. Mensah, whose tribute we are reading today. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Jeffrey, E.T. Mensah is also gone. Yeah, I, 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 I knew E.T. from a close range because I was living around the, in, in, the, in the Ridge Enclave, so okay. you know someone who was very close to the Rawlinses, I mean. He was very active from the PNDC era into mm. the NDC era. So he actually is known from that angle. And then I think um, as, as, as he ends now, he ended as a, a member of the Council of State. Mm. So he still sits up there and serving his country. Uh, he was, I think he was a very long serving MP for Ningo Pram Pram. And he, he actually can be associated with the, uh, their vocational school, mm. Pram Pram IT Royals. He, lo he loved football as well very dedicated to sports. So he, and, I mean, a class of folk can also remember him for his service. Um, he was very passionate about youth development in, mm. in, 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 in his game. And then employment was also one of the things he did for his constituency, if you looked at that area. I, I think I also remember he was a mayor of Accra, mm -hmm. um, AMA. Yeah. So I remember him for, for that one too. Condolences to the family and may he so rest in peace. I mean, you know, for now, I think um, he was a state servant. I mean, yeah. as a council of state member, you know, E.T. E was a known face. I mean, Ghanaian politics, you know, so something to talk about is um, we, we look at them as people who have served the country. We wish the family to come together and, um, and the state to give them the support and give him a befitting barrier. His, his own party, the NDC, should also, you know, mm -hmm. be, receive some of our parting from condolence box. Right. That, I mean, right. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Mesa, 18. Well, another unfortunate uh, incident. Um, I think that um, we can only wish the family our uh, sincere, very sincere condolences. You know, also, and also we need to extend the sincere condolences to the National Democratic Congress. Uh, we, was a member of, and also to the New Patriotic Party, yeah. which he joined later in his in his late days. 
as a <laughs> as a member of the NPP. So it's a very unfortunate. Did you become a member of the NPP? Oh, I, I, I don't I don't know how oh, Mesa got got that fat. Oh, no, no, no I need a clarification. Yeah. I, I didn't hear about that. So. Oh, he, he didn't join the NPP. Yeah, you are saying. Oh, okay. Well, we know that he was a member of the Council of State. Yeah, he was a member of yes, yes a member of the Council right. of State. And yes. does that qualify him to be a member of NPP? Oh. Let's think about this carefully before you give me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, yes. we are mourning, though, and you are making us laugh. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you find the humor in this, you know. We, we, we are mourning, you know. We are, we are, we are mourning um, the, the life of who's a, a veteran politician, yeah. you know, who, who has paid his dues to this country as a minister for youth and sports. That's where I really know him, most of his mm. work being done as a longest serving minister for youth and sports. And so, I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate. He's also lived a very long life. I mean, I don't know how old he was. 77. 77. It's, 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 it's quite a milestone. Yeah. And so um, we can only celebrate his life and his achievement. Um, I'm not sure what his legacy is as at this moment, but I think there's something to learn from. And we wish his family and all the close people um, our deepest, deepest condolences. Right. So, um, quite unfortunate news, but these are people who have contributed their own quotas to the development of Ghana, and we stand in prayer with both families, that is the Kofors and, of course, E.T. Mensah's family. But moving away from that, you know, um, we, we are in the campaign season, and people are talking, candidates are talking, NPP is, um, you know, Campaign has started. NDC still is also on, and one that I want us to look at is Kennedy Japan um, with this running mate issue. So he says that Baumia's team attempted to bribe me to be his running mate, and this is Kennedy Japan alleging a story confined on the city newsroom by Edward Opon Maf. He says New Patriotic Party NPP presidential hopeful Kennedy Japan has alleged that Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's campaign team attempted to bribe him to accept an offer to be his running mate, but he refused. Mr. Japon also accused Dr. Baumia of engaging in acts that had the potential of collapsing the party. He made these allegations at the Jubilee Park in Kumasi in the Ashanti region after a march organized by his supporters. Now, the flag bearer hopeful of the NPP stressed that a vice president and his team were intimidating party members who were not his supporters. Scores of inhabitants in the Ashanti region thronged the principal streets of Kumasi to march to show their support for the NPP flag bearer hopeful. Many of the people who joined the march cited the current economic situation in the country as a reason for throwing their support behind their central member of parliament. The persons who are primarily NPP sympathizers say... They believe Kennedy Japan is the only candidate that can help the party retain power in the 2024 elections. Jeffrey, this is what is going on. But I must add that from the camp of um, the vice president, they have also yeah. um, refuted this allegation. They, they say that out. nothing of that sort has happened. They have not, I mean, put it emphatically, contacted or tried to bribe or lure Kennedy Japan to be the running mate to the vice president? Well, technically, when you go, you go into politics, it's not a crime to actually approach somebody who you know as the next person who actually gives you the challenge. The person giving you a run for your money to approach the person and lobby the person to be your vice. Is, you, are still, you are still lobbying to be on top, though. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if you were going there to lobby the person to be the person's vice, that's another thing. But for... The, for him to say that they were lobbying him to actually, that would be another maybe political way of doing mm -hmm. things. But to use the word bribery, then it becomes very problematic. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, if, if you have a person who is in that stature, I mean, how much would they pay to such a person? Because if it was myself, son of a poor bank who said, I mean, if you, maybe if you, 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 you it's still, if, not because I'm selling my right, but mm -hmm. if, if I thought of it and it will work for me, I might consider you know coming to be yeah. with you but if you bring the issue of money mm -hmm. that you're coming to bribe me to you know step into the shoes of a, of a running mate then technically becomes an issue that you know becomes very detrimental mm -hmm. to our democracy so that's another issue on the issue of um, harassment of his following you know I would always say this that 
this term we're using in Ghana now, that uh, showdown, showdown, you know, what is stemmed from the fact that during the early one that they were, mm -hmm. they were engaged in, yeah. there were some brouhaha's. No single soul in this Republic of Ghana can convince me that there were no shakeups. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, it's a matter that we all saw on television. And he said, he accused them, and I'm sure they've had a way of discussing it. I mentioned the other time, I think that moving forward, they still need to do some talking here and there. But on the accusation of them coming forward to tell him and lobbying him, I think there was a response from the, yes, uh, the Baumia team. Baumia, yeah. And I think it is, it is his word against their word. Yeah. We have something we call the perception game. You know, When people accuse you or say something against you, you are best coming to explain, if possible, with very good information. You don't sit back and say you don't care because it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, because perceptions form. Mm -hmm. if, 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 like, like um, Mensa mentioned, which I, I, I have a, a right to believe or not, that, he, I mean, this weekend was a very busy one for you. Because there was, they, you were seen, I mean, maybe, you know, enjoying a Chinese restaurant or maybe driving a Bugatti or something. I mean, if, if, if it's, it's said, and then somebody wants to file a defense, you should be interested to say, look, it's not true. You don't sit back and say, oh, I mean, you know you've not given any Bugatti, so no, 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 no. You need to issue some information and even caution who and who wants to come public with it mm. so that it, you, you streamline. You don't sit back, especially in politics, mm. because if you keep quiet and the norm becomes that people will just slur your image, you end up losing a lot. In global circles, mm. corruption issues have even jumped to the area of perception index. What, what is the perception of people? There are facts to back. Every time, but, but should we, should we, should we not also go beyond making sweeping statements? You know, so for exactly. instance, the sweeping statement that Mensa boldly sat on TV to right. make that the weekend was busy for me. I think right. we should take him on, you know, because yeah, you, you just can't make sweeping statements exactly and just say that okay, um, they attempted bribing me with what, how much, give us details. But you should only be careful not to waste too much energy uh -huh. on that side, too. Yeah, while I'm advising that you can take them on and you know, uh -huh. straighten things. In a, in a game of politics, that could be a strategy of your opponent to, you know, kind of frustrate and obstruct you. Obstruct you, exactly, yeah. distracting you from your like agenda. Wants to do this so movie. you can set one side of your uh, uh, campaign team to be handling such, mm -hmm. and then also pushing your agenda. L look, sometimes the, 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 the enemy's card can be used for empathy mm -hmm. and support for yourself. Yeah. So every misfortune can become a blessing in politics. Mm. But that said, I think we should look at these two issues very well. A word like bribery to come on board is not healthy for our politics. Mm. You know, we should be concerned about it. He didn't just say that they were lobbying. He said they were actually using, you know, some 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 form of bribery mm. to lure him on board. Let's get to understand it very well and iron them out well. But I think um, we want to see more of issues like education, health. What are they going to deliver? Employment. You know, uh, what are you going to turn around? I've heard some of the things that Honorable Japona said. I mean, I'm hearing some of the Balmia things. Let's be interested in what they have, the social goods mm -hmm. that they are ready to deliver so that we can listen to them and then right from the primary level in their parties, let's get the, what they want to give and then we'll match it by what they will promise at the national level mm -hmm. that they can inform our selection. Right, so that is Jeffrey's pick on um, Kennedy Japon legend that Balmia's team attempted bribing him, you know, just for, to, for him to be his running